The U.S. Soccer Federation has agreed to pay its men's and women's teams equally, making it the first in the sport to promise both sexes matching money. To discuss this, let's bring in Nancy Hogshead Makar, a local former Olympic swimmer, an attorney, and an activist for equal pay. Good morning. Good to see you again, Nancy. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So this has been something that activists have been working on to make happen for years. What's your reaction to it? <clears throat> oh, gosh, it's one of those, what took you so long? You know, how come it took so long for USA Soccer to agree that equal means equal? Mm -hmm, certainly. And no other country's soccer federation has ever taken the step to split FIFA prize money which is significantly higher on the men's side. I want to give you some perspective for everybody at home right now. The difference right here. So when the women's team won the World Cup in 2019, they took home $110,000 in bonus money. Had the men's team won in 2018, a year prior, they would have taken home $407,000 in bonus. So obviously, I know that you would say a lot still needs to be done, Nancy. Well, I, yeah, and I, I just want to go back to kind of the financials of how it is that USA Soccer is set up. USA Soccer is a national governing body underneath the umbrella of the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. And as such, it has a monopoly over being able to, to pick the teams for the Olympics or the World Cup or all those kinds of things. So it doesn't just have a monopoly over being able to sell the games to cut to um sponsors and whatnot, but it also has a monopsony power over the buying power of athletes. The athletes essentially don't have any other place to go. There's no other entity that can come along and say, no, 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 we can pick the uh, World Cup soccer team better than you can. We can pick the Olympic team better than you can. We can sell the rings better than you can. So because of that monopoly power, most of the sponsors that were coming in actually were much more interested in in the women's game than they were the men's game because most people know who Megan Rapino is. Most people don't know who the men's soccer player, the best soccer players that we have in the United States. So, so all the money that was coming in was essentially getting diverted over to the men. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we got to look at other sports now, right? Other sports sure. still have that gender gap. Huge. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what needs so to be uh, done? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, different financial structures, like the USA Basketball, does not put on the WNBA or the NBA, right? Those are for-profit, different kinds of of economic models. Um, I've been teaching sports law for about twenty years now, and one of the things that uh, most of my students kind of understand how the NBA professional sports work and they understand how that uh, college sports work, but they really don't understand how um, the Olympic sports movement works and how the, you know, how that these national governing bodies are responsible for both the men's and the women's program. And, um, and um, so I'm hopeful that as it becomes uh, cooler and cooler to be uh, one of to be, you know, a, 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 a women's sports athlete that, uh, you know, you're going to see more and more people watching and you're going to see more and more uh, recognition for what it is that these women are doing. Absolutely. We have a lot of superstars, just like you. I remember seeing your gold medals right there at your house. So thank you for coming on this morning. <laughs> Nancy Hogshead Maycar, and I know that we're going to have more conversations about this as we continue to evolve. We will be right back Absolutely. with the news at 9 right after the break.